So this talk is about gestures, and um, this was inspired by a project that I've been uh, on for the last three years, actually. And uh, in this one, we really heavily used touch panels. Um, I've used gestures before, but not to this level. Uh, so I, I was the guy assigned to get the gestures to work. Now, this was a further complication because we are using Qt 521, which is, as, as you know, ancient. But um, they couldn't do anything about that. It's 521, and 521 has some bugs in the touch area that makes it sort of unusable. <coughs> so if you are using touch or about to use touch, the first thing that I'll say is make sure you at least use Qt 5.6 or stay at 4.8, because the first versions, at least up until 5.3, are not usable for touch handling at all. It's broken beyond what even I could almost fix. It, was, it came to the point where we actually seriously considered backporting the fixes to, Q to our version there, but um, it looked like we worked around most of it at the time. So. Um, one of the things you will see by the door is that we are holding a, a comp competition for a very small drone. It's, it's really small, but it's, it has a C++ API, and that's the fun part. So you can program this thing to do a lot of stuff. Not for a long time, though, because it's so small that it only has a seven-minute flight time battery. But it's, it's a lot of fun to play with. And we are um, doing this uh, tomorrow. We're just uh, hosting it. If you're not at uh, NASA's talk, that's the last of the Viking talks tomorrow. And if you're not there, then we'll, of course, ship it to you. Throw a business card into the black box over there. We'll pass the black box around you in a minute. And uh, then you can win this little thing. Um, if you don't have a business card, we have a do-it-yourself business card. Just uh, something you can write on over there as well. Oh, and another thing. I, I, some of you probably saw my talk earlier today, but uh, those who didn't or haven't heard or seen other of my talks on other years, I have uh, random pun jokes at the bottom. It's because my slides are boring, and uh, that means you should have something to look at. So I just put some pun jokes there. There is no reason for it. It doesn't have any kind of connection to the talk at all. They're just there. Laugh if you want or don't. So. Viking Software is um, a company I started uh, about three or four years ago, and uh, we, are, we don't have our own projects. Um, we are completely coding for customers, so we're doing stuff for other businesses, uh, implementing your applications, that's what we say. I've personally been involved in Qt since uh, March 1997, when one of my friends showed me KDE for the first time, and I was like, ah, this looks useful which is compared to the UI we had at the time on Linux was actually a big thing. Um, so I got involved with Qt and I've been here ever since. And now I'm uh, almost at the point where I have to give up programming and become a full-time manager. Uh, so yeah, I'm joining the dark side. Uh, that's just the way it has to be. Um, so gestures. The, during this large project that we've been on, the gestures have been one of the things that we've really been battling with. And one of the reasons for this is that the documentation for gestures says what gestures is and what you do, but it doesn't say why, and it's difficult to find good comprehensive examples of what the gestures do. So I, while doing this, I thought this, I have to do this at, uh, at World Summit. So fortunately, they accepted it. And looking at the number of people here, I can see that I'm not the only one. So how many of you have, been, uh, have done gestures coding before with Qt? OK. 7.899%, that's fine. Um, that means I'll keep it at a very low level. Um, so, gestures, why do we even care about this? It's, 
I, I say that we're, what we're doing here is, is trying to invent a way of, of handling our devices that sort of look like magic. I mean, have you seen Doctor Strange, the movie that came out last year? And they're doing this. And then you get uh, this energy in the middle. That's sort of, that's a gesture. That, so that's what we want to do. We want to do magic. But unfortunately, Cute is not exactly at that level yet, but we'll get there. But the big reason for doing gestures is that it's a complicated way of accessing your device. That's, that's really what the problem is. The mouse stuff we have right now, that's fine for click and drag. That's what it can do, nothing else. That's what we've been doing since the mouse was invented in the 70s. That's a long time for something that's a fairly complex and, and decent device, but now, we are using multiple fingers, we are doing gestures that inc include multiple clicks and so on. So how do you handle that? And well, that's what we're going to talk about here. So mouse events, the first thing you want to realize is that you can actually still use mouse events today if you only have single touch devices. And a surprising amount of the devices we use with the exception of tablets, are actually single-touch hardware. And if that's the case, then you don't need gestures. You can stay with the mouse events. You might still want to go to gestures because there are, if you have complicated ways of accessing your device, so complicated interactions with it, then it's possible that you might want to do it. it another thing where gestures make sense is that they go to specific widgets or items uh, instead of just going to whatever you pressed on first. And that's a difference between uh, mouse events and gestures, but we'll get back to that at the moment, uh, in a minute. So mouse events, I assume they are pretty much just, um, by the way, this is one of my favorite pun jokes. I absolutely love this one. So on the widget side, this is what we have. This, these are the gestures you, you have access to where you just say, yeah, I'll use them. That's, um, and, and for a big amount of what we do, this is enough. Um, because gestures today is a lot about doing what your phone can do, which is swipe and pinch. Those are the normal gestures that we're used to on any phone. Um, of course, the tap, which is a click, and uh, pan or uh, tap and hold. We don't really use tap and hold a lot today. In the Nokia days, these were the area where you find all the good stuff, but you couldn't see that it was available. So you kept throughout some stumbling into new features. Um, on the QML side, things are a bit more sad, which is weird because QML is designed for devices where you have stuff like multi-touch, but it is a lot less decent to work with, actually. So these are the ways you use it. You, you do have censored gestures, but that's not your fingers. That's when you take the device and do like this, or you drop it, or whatever. Then you do get a gesture that the this is free-falling now. That's usually a bad sign. Or you get... Um, there is, I, I saw something about uh, Sony Ericsson did, you could do this with a phone and then it swiped to the next uh, song you were playing. Woo -hoo! And that was pretty cool, apparently. But stuff like that, that's implemented with sensor gestures on QML side. The flickable, that's just your table going up and down or lists, stuff like that. And then you have the multi-point area, multi-point touch area, sorry. Um, and that's the way you do everything else. So if you have any kind of a gesture you want to do in, in QML, then you just have to do a multi-point touch area and you have to do it from scratch. And th that's sad, but I know that um, in the Qt Contributor Summit that was on the last two days, they actually were discussing this area because this is a problem. It's fine to do these gestures if you only do the pinch stuff and you only do scrolling or tapping. That's fine for QML, but custom gestures, so hard to do. Um, so I'm not actually going to talk, talk about it today because um, 
in in the QML area, it will change. It's going to change within the next version because they are they are aware that this sucks at the moment. So if you did come here to hear a lot about QML gestures, then that's sad. But um, the point are actually pretty much these things. So take a look at multi-point touch area. That's the Oh yeah, you we, well we didn't think of that, so you can probably do it with multi-point touch area. That's that's sort of it. So widgets, widgets are much more cool for gestures, which is so weird, because widgets are designed for the old school interfaces, but for gestures, which is the new thing, that's where Qt really shines at the moment. But well, so here's what you do if you want to have gestures on your device. A surprising amount of devices are actually using widgets and not QML. And I sort of said in my earlier slides today uh, that unless you do a lot of animations on your device, then widgets is fine. And um, especially for gestures, widgets is good. So you say to Qt, I want to have touch events. That's the first step you do. If you don't do this, then Qt will just say, okay, it there is nothing in front of you. You have a full widget this size, you have small widgets this size in the middle, but that one did not want touch events, so it doesn't exist. You might start your pinch over it, but it didn't want touch event, so for touch, it doesn't exist. Your touch goes directly to the big one. So you say grab gesture, tap gesture, good. This one now wants clicks. I, I can click on it. So if you pinch, it doesn't exist. It goes to the one below it. Um, one thing that I found out after a while was that there is this, which probably goes for the longest flag name of Qt award, and uh, that one just say, if you do have a mouse event that goes nowhere, then synthesize it to a touch event. What that means is you can use your mouse on your laptop to control the touch stuff, so to the application, it looks like you actually pressed a touch thing on, on this. That's pretty cool for just testing and development, and it's, it's very well. But the problem is that it doesn't do multi-touch. So one, if you do need multi-touch and you want to develop on this, there is actually a phone application that you can get, and uh, there is an input event system that uh, you can install on your device, and then you, the phone and the device talks together, so you can sit on your phone and do multi-touch stuff on your phone, and it just sends it to the device or, or to your laptop or whatever you run this input on, and then it looks like you are doing the device stuff. And that sounds weird, but it's really useful for debugging. That's exactly the point where it's useful for. Run the application on your phone, and then run it inside your debugger on your laptop, and you can still use the thing exactly like you were on the real device. That's very useful. So that's enough for mouse handling. No, no, I won't talk. I promise, no more mouse. Inside the event handlers, that's where things get weird because we do, we're used to having event handlers for everything cute related, but not for touch. So you have to actually implement event directly. And then you just say, okay, is this a gesture event? Perfect. Now we do gesture stuff. So I always do it exactly like this. I don't want to have a lot of lines inside the big my widget colon colon event. That's bad. Just call a function or method if you prefer. So here's the thing that actually does work. And as you can see here, it it's a recipe that it requires a fair amount of, of characters to implement, but once you've done it once, it's really easy to add it to other widgets. Um, so you take inside your, you are now in the method you call from event, you're inside the gesture event, you know you have a queue gesture event to work with. First thing you'll see, I know we're listening for taps here, so is it a tap? Okay, then handle tap stuff. If not, then do something else on the next gestures you're listening for. And that's what you do. It's, it's that simple. Usually, if this is big, then I go one step further and I have a tap gesture event method and I have a, 
uh, pinch gesture method uh, and so on. It's um, it it can actually the code the lines of code grows quite a lot um, as you do this. The gesture states on this is something you're not used to on mouse perhaps, but it, it's it's actually not difficult to understand. For example, you want to have pinch events. Pinch is something you do with two fingers. So the pinch gesture recognizer, we're going to get into the recognizers in a minute. That first C, you press down on your tablet. Now, is are you doing a pinch? Nope. Can you guarantee you won't do? Nope. So you may be coming to a gesture, but you're not there yet. Now you press down with the other finger. You have two downs. Are you doing a pinch yet? Nope, because you haven't moved your fingers, but you may be on the area of getting there. Now you're starting to move your fingers just a bit. I'm moving my fingers very little. You can't see it. And that's a reason for that. And the code will say, ah, you moved your fingers. It's not enough. I'm not there yet. Now you do this, and you move, and you drag. <gasps> I'm a pinch. And then it says, yes, I'm in a pinch. And then you, then you get the, um, we are now in a started first, and then it gets updated whenever you do this. So in your application, you keep getting all these events to the methods we saw in the last slides, and you listen for the started, you listen for the updated. If it says canceled, then you say, <gasps> I want to go back to the state it was before the first press, uh, because it wasn't, he didn't really mean it. And then at the end, when you say finished, okay, then now we're done. Because you could also do, what should you do if you press the one, you press the second, now you do this, and then you press the third. Now what? That's not a pinch. So what you do, do. At that point, it becomes up to us as developers to figure out how should the device actually handle this. I've done a pinch stuff, it looked like a pinch, but after a second, it's suddenly no longer a pinch. <gasps> so that's, then usually we just say, hmm, okay, then we just assume he meant a pinch, pinch and stop there. And, or something like that. Just do something that you say, this is probably what the user meant. Because what usually happens is that you were pinching and then you just accidentally touch the third one. So that probably doesn't mean that you want the application to jump back to the initial state, but you will get a canceled at that point. So when you want to implement gestures yourself, well, if you, if you don't want to implement gestures yourself, you just want to use the standard gestures, then I've just shown you all the code you need. It's not more than that. It's, so it's actually not hard to use uh, the widgets. The fun stuff comes if you want to do stuff like now I want to make a four finger swipe like that. Something I've had a three finger swipe from one customer. So that's actually not a something I came up with. So you implemented two classes. Um, the first one is the gesture itself. This is the one that tracks the state. For example, you will get the initial press points of all the three points you were pressing on. You're also guessing, getting all the points that you, as you're moving to, or as many as you want to store. Maybe you don't want to store all the immediate, maybe you only want to store the start and the begin, the end. But you, that's up to you. For a swipe with one finger, which is the one I'm showing here, you're just pressing uh, the press point and the last one, because what happens in the middle doesn't matter. We'll just move it to the vector between the two points anyway. So the recognizer class, this is where it gets fun for us as developers, at least, because this is hairy. This is, this is the part where it's difficult for you to, to do stuff. But it, so that's why it's fun. So the, one, the first thing is, yeah, we can create a swipe gesture. Sure, that's just a new. The one that does all the stuff is this one, recognize. That's the one you have to implement, overwrite. Um, I always use override, but it didn't fit. So it, it imagine it. So on the next page, we'll implement the override, but this is the class that handles figuring out are we actually doing this gesture or not? That's, that's the only thing it, it tries to do. That's a lot of code on a small slide, but uh, sorry. 
Um, and we're not even done. This is, this is a very, I think the actual code I wrote was about three times as much for this single one. It has a lot of if else, and there is not, no way to handle anything about that. This is the, oh, I was in a pinch, and now the guy pressed a third one. You have to handle all of these corner cases. And that's just a long, boring list of if else, if else, if else. And I didn't want to show all that. Then, I mean, it's now almost five o'clock. You've been here since morning, and you would definitely fall asleep. So you'll miss the party. Bad. That's, um, so let's, let's stay somewhat simple. So the touch begin, user press something. Now, if, um, if we have one point, turn, one point um, touch point, then maybe we are pressing something. But if we're not, then we are now canceled, which means we just uh, return ignore. And then the gesture widget you were writing before, that gets uh, canceled and you're done. You won't get any more inside this code. But if not, now you moved your, so you, then it calls update. Well, it calls recognize again, and then you get the type, and then you get here. You get to update. And then you say, okay, we have um, no gesture in the state, and we have not moved yet. Maybe it's a swipe, one finger swipe. I don't know. Um, there are more here. Um, more that you have to handle. But assuming, okay, we have now moved, then you say trigger gesture. At that point, you get the start to the widget. From that point on, you assume we are now swiping. And then at the end, when you just release, you'd send a finish gesture, or if you press the second time, then you get a cancel, so on. So that's pretty much it. Using the custom gesture is very easy. You just recognize, uh, register the class you just have, and then you grab the ID that you just created from that, and you're done. Now, um, one thing you need to consider in this is the idea of the indivisibility of widget that I was talking about. So I have the big one and one in the middle, that doesn't recognize gestures. That's fine, we just print over it and it looks like it's just part of the, uh, of the display. It's actually a widget, but we don't care because we're just doing touch. Now at the bottom, you have a menu bar. So when you click something here, then you do not want the click to go through into the area behind it that has the actual working area of your display. So if you have a button there or something, then fine, you'll take the touch event, you'll, you have the click, you have fine. But if you press down on it in an area that doesn't have anything, then you still want to grab this area, grab the, the touch click. But you probably also want to grab some, which, some uh, gestures that you don't care about. For example, inside a menu area, you probably don't want the pinch to go through into the, uh, the working widget behind it. Usually, you might want to, but usually you don't. So the touch, the, the pinch thing, even though your menu bar doesn't in any way handle a pinch, you still want to say, I will grab the pinch. And then your event gets called with all the pinch stuff, but you just don't handle it, so it just disappears. But you handle the pinch there, so it doesn't go to the widget that's behind it. That's the thing you have to think about. This is also the way you can make a poor man's touch event filter. I mean, you, sure, you can do the standard object event filter, but you can just put something at the front that's invisible and start grabbing gestures if you want to. But I don't really know what you would, but you can. Um, so that is actually it, and I have been a bit ahead of time. Now, some of you came a bit late, so um, I'll just remind everyone, uh, put your business card in the black thing over there, because then you might win a drone that you can hack with C++ tomorrow, um, and we'll ship it to you if you're not at the talk for that. So, business cards, there. 
do as I say, we are Vikings. We get angry and then we have axes and stuff. So I actually don't have a lot more because gestures is a small topic. It's not like tomorrow, this talk tomorrow or, or uh, earlier today where I didn't have enough time. So what I'll do is um, I'll let you ask questions and we can start out with gestures questions. And if we don't have enough gestures questions, then we have 10 minutes where you can just ask me for anything cute related. It doesn't have to be gestures. You can talk about coding, designer plugins, whatever. Just shoot. So, any gestures, questions? Yes? Maybe so in Wayland, for example, we have some problems with the formatting of the events for touch and for moving around on the things. So, we have other. So, the question was Wayland and multi touch and handling that. Well, That's it, it's how do you handle stuff with Wayland? Well, that's that's sort of a very good question because the Wayland compositor means that you can have several applications running that look to the user like you have one application running. So what I would do in in that one, if you needed to focus uh, to look like one touch area, then I would I, I probably just say, don't give me the touch events at all. Just um, you can configure Wayland to not handle something or, on each area, I think. Then we'll go to other widgets, applications, I think. Now, if you can't do that, and I'm, I'm not sure because I'm definitely not a Wayland expert, um, then what you could do is to just start grabbing on each of them and then using simple IPC, uh, if your system is Linux based, then it's dbus, just ship a simple, very simple IPC uh, method from one application to the other. Something like that, so it looks to the user like you're still working on one application, but you're actually using more of them. Alternatively, you could have as an invisible front layer that is the uh, gesture application. I would advise against that because then it becomes really weird when you change the way that you want, where you want to have widgets uh, or touch stuff set, sent to. So I wouldn't do that, but it's possible. But I think you might have to sometimes resort to IPC stuff, unless you can convince Wayland that you're application is in video. Any Wayland expert here who can tell if that's possible? No. Other questions? Yes? Ah. That can be yeah, so so you're basically hacking the compositor to do what you're asking. I like the idea. Yeah. Good. Thank you. Any other questions? Okay. Any questions that are not gestures related? Anything you have been struggling with on the cute side? On anything? Come on. You have a cute expert standing in front of you. This is I'm a, I'm a consultant. This is expensive. You're getting it for free. I do not believe that not a single one of you has something you're not sure of with Qt. That's impossible. The documentation is good, but not that good. Yes? Later, 
the uh, one still there and name it red for the whole project. And I was not sure why that happened because I thought I read the documentation, nothing changed. Yeah. I, so, so the question is about delete later. You're, you're doing something in a widget, and the reason you use delete later is, for example, if you're inside a slot and you want to delete an object for the slot that was the target um, for this signal slot, then you will crash if you just delete the, the receiver. You ha then you have to use delete later. And there are different ways where you widget. You do something, and now suddenly you want parts of the UI to disappear, and if those were the same as the one the user just accessed, then you have to use the late, delete later. Now, I've seen the same. I've, I've seen this, and the only reason, uh, the only explanation I can give is that there is a bug, cute bug somewhere, because delete later should be completely infallible. Um, but we have seen this in, in some projects as well. You call delete later, but the object isn't actually deleted, so, um, what our way of working around that was um, to do it several times, actually. Um, to I have, I have for one project a delete later object that uh, just have a timer, keep calling delete later. So, you put it on death row and you don't know exactly when it's deleted. So, take it out of your UI, call hide on it and then put it in a delete thing that just keeps deleting it until it's actually deleted. So you put it in a queue pointer, so you know if it's deleted, if it's done, delete this, we're done. So, and if, if not, then just keep deleting it. Another way, thing you can do with that is that you don't actually have to use delete later. Because if, if you put the objects inside that one and, and you use a timer for it or a lambda function or whatever, then it's outside of your and you're back in the event loop, so you can just call delete on it instead of delete later. But sometimes you still have to use delete later. For s so th then it becomes really annoying. But um, so, so I would use something like that instead. I've seen it, that, and I cannot explain it. I mean, in, in all my life, since the first days they came up with delete later, and that wasn't in 97, it was a bit later, the delete later have been completely infallible. Just call delete later. It's as good as delete. It just means that you don't crash inside when you're in receiver slots. So suddenly it started not working. Now, as I said, that this was actually in the same project that I was using gestures. So I was using Qt 5.2.1. So it might be that it's just because we have this version from when, I don't know, Pericles was wandering the ancient Greek area. That's the ancient Greek version of Qt. Um, and it's, if you have something that's five years uh, more recent, then you might not have a problem with delete later. So, other questions? Yes? Yes. So, meaning any, anywhere that I put two fingers out on the screen, or two fingers front, or two fingers right on the screen, yes. it should be captured by the overlay. Yes. <laughs> what, so, the question was about having this invisible um, gesture handler over the rest of your UI, just to handle the case where you click with two fingers. Now, first of all, I wouldn't actually do that if I could get away with it, because if you do make a custom gesture that's a two-finger click, and then only your furthest back widget um, handles this gesture, then it should only go here. Even the ones in front, they should be in completely invisible for, for this type of click. As long as you don't say, grab gesture, two-finger clicking. But there are still areas where you might be tempted to do this invisible stuff in, in front. One of the uh, cases where I have been several times um, almost doing that is because I was working with a buggy version where the, it, sent, it was sent the wrong ways. Um, so the way you do that is to say it's invisible to mouse events, so you still get mouse through. You only grab the one in front, and then you just pass the rest of it behind it. Now, 
the one thing you have to be careful about is if you have um, if you have multiple widgets that are uh, siblings to your front widget. Because then if you call race or something, then you might actually have something that goes to the front. So what I usually do if I have to do something like that is I put a widget around them. I have a parent widget and the only thing the parent widget does is hold the ones behind and the one in front. Because then I can put the ones behind as one big sub widget. And then if something called race in there, then it only races to the front of, of that part. So you, this one is still in front. But other than that, there's no problem doing it. The problem with doing that, something like that, is then you have to calculate what part of your UI you're actually clicking. Which means, sometimes, that depends on what you're doing. That, that's UI, that's uh, application specific. Okay, more questions? Yes? So you have a QML combo box, you have a, a list of something inside, and you want strings, uh, strings or key or value pays. And now you want to know what the current item is without... Um, what I usually do is to, in my, my model classes, I have a give me the actual information I want from when when you get an index okay. so so instead of all over your application using the indexes i just say model give me the the string or something like that because then you keep this it contained inside the model instead of copying that logic all over your application because it is model specific so you should have that model inside that class but there is no simple way of just doing that Constantly, I, you might be able to get away with it on your combo box in in some way, but then you have other applications, other areas where you, the only thing you have is the index, and you want something based of that. Now you can call the data function on the index, sure, but that might not be exactly what you want. So my choice is always implement a method on the model itself that says when I have an index and I call this method, it gives me that information from the item in the right way. So if you have proxy widgets, uh, proxy models in front, then it becomes more hairy because then you need to, to go to the source index first and then call your model. And you might not even have access to your model because there might be some source models or, or something. So it's not always that easy, but it is doable. And the only real um, same thing I would say to you is put the logic inside the class for the model. That's where it belongs. Okay. We are now over time. So I cannot answer any more questions. And apparently my laptop decided to shut off anyway. So we are now in party mode. So thank you very much for coming. Make sure that you throw your business cards in there and enjoy the party tonight.